This will be a very short video. Uh, we'll be talking about Chapter 3, Section 1 in your Operating Systems textbook. And basically we're just going to talk about what is a process. Uh, for the rest of this chapter and the next, when we say the word process, what are we talking about? What do we mean? Now, when we're managing multiple applications, we want the resources of our system to be available to all of those applications. The processor will be switched among those multiple applications so that all will appear to be progressing. This way, the processor and the input-output devices can be used efficiently. So, on to the question, what is a process? Now, a process has two absolutely essential pieces, which would be the program code, which could be shared by other processes that are executing the same code, and a set of data associated with that code. We, at the minimum, need those two pieces to have a process. Now, when the processor begins executing that program code, we refer to the executing entity as a process. Now, we're also going to need some sort of data structure to contain information that uniquely characterizes the process. At any given time that a program is executing, the process can be uniquely characterized by a number of different elements, including those listed here. A process ID, which is a unique identifier that's associated with this process to distinguish it from any other. The state tells us what state the process is in, and we'll talk more about this in the next video. But for example, if the process is in the running state, that means it's currently executing. The priority simply gives us a level of priority relative to any other processes. The program counter, which simply holds the address of the next instruction in the program to be executed. Memory pointers include pointers to the program code and data associated with this process, plus any memory block shared with other processes. Context data is data present in registers in the processor while the process is executing. Input-output status includes outstanding input-output requests, I.O. devices like disk drives assigned to this process, a list of files in use by the process, etc., etc. Finally, accounting information may include the amount of processor time and clock time used, time limits, account numbers, and so on. Uh, when we put all of these together, it gives us our simplified process control block. So, this process control block contains the elements from the last slide, and this is what makes it possible to interrupt a running process and later resume execution of that process as though it never stopped. These process control blocks are created and managed by the operating system, and this is what allows support for multiple processes. The way we can share a single processor amongst multiple processes is if we can pause the execution of a process, save the state, and then start it back up again as though it never stopped. Well, that's all for this video. In the next video, we'll take a look at Chapter 3, Section 2 on Process States.